Hey guys, in this video I'll go over the lantern pod for the Tomcat. If you're on the ground, you can put the pod on by clicking backslash, ground crew, rearm and refuel, then go to pylon 8B, go to pods and select lantern pod. Request rearming. Here's what it looks like. You control the pod from the back seat. The control panel for the pod is on the left here. First you need to turn it on. It's kind of hard to see but the power switch is right behind the stick. There's two positions, the middle says IMU and on the right it says pod. The IMU position doesn't do anything in DCS so just set it to pod. Then on your screen here set it to TV. If you see the TCS camera video feed then you need to come back here and switch this to FLIR and then it should show you the lantern video feed. When you set it to FLIR mode, if your screen is completely black you need to wait for the pod to warm up. It should take a couple minutes and once it's warmed up it'll say not ready. That means the pod is stowed and you need to unstow it. And the way you do that is by clicking the standby button. And then it'll start blinking. And after around 20 seconds, it'll unstow the pod. Before I go over the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to go over all the things you need to have binded. Make sure you have F14 Rio selected here. And in the categories, go down to Lantern Control Panel. First, you need the actual movement of the lantern stick. You can do this with buttons or with axes. If you want to do it with buttons, you can have these ones, lantern slew down, left, right, and up. And if you want to do it with axes, you can go to the axis commands and bind these two, lantern slew X and lantern slew Y. Now let's go back to the lantern control panel. Now there are a lot of bindings you need for the lantern stick. And since you probably already have some other things binded to your stick, for example, the hand control unit for the Rio, is setting one of the buttons on your stick as a modifier. The way you do that is you click modifiers, and then you can set either a modifier or a switch. If you set one of the buttons as a modifier, that means you need to hold the button while you're pressing something else. For example, there's already a bunch of modifiers here like left alt and left control. The way that works is you can't just click left control once and then click the letter S. You have to hold left control while you're clicking S. If you do a switch, then you can click the button once. So what I've done is I've set the pinky button on my stick as a switch. So when I click that button, it activates lantern mode and all the other buttons on my stick I click will control the lantern stick. And then if I click my pinky button again, it'll go back to normal mode and all the buttons on my stick will control the hand control unit and all my other regular Rio buttons. So for example, if I was gonna bind this button here, what I would do is I'd choose the button I want and I would also click my modifier. Okay, so now let's go over the actual bindings you need. You need lantern area track, laser latched, lantern mode air to ground, lantern mode nav air to air, or instead of having lantern mode air to ground and lantern nav air to air, you could just have lantern toggle. Then you need lantern point track, lantern Q waypoint plus and minus, all the lantern S4 hat buttons, lantern slider AGC and also lantern slider laser, toggle field of view, white hot black hot, trigger full action and half action, and undesignate. Now if you have a limited amount of buttons on your stick, you might want to bind some of these onto your keyboard. However, some of the buttons you might want to prioritize to put on your stick are probably lantern trigger half action and full action, and also maybe lantern toggle field of view. Once the targeting pod is unstowed, you should see it right here. You can use your stick to move the pod around. The first thing you're going to notice is that it's really bright and hard to see. You could adjust the brightness and contrast switches here, but in my experience it doesn't really help that much. But there is another thing you can do. Right here it says AGC, which stands for automatic gain. If you press the slider AGC MGC switch, then MGC will start blinking, and now you're in manual gain control. And you can use the S4 hat up and down to control the gain and the S4 hat left and right to control the level. And once you're done, you can press the slider MGC AGC switch again, and the MGC should stop blinking, and now it's easier to see things. Just make sure you don't click the slider switch again, because then it will automatically switch back to auto gain. Another thing you can do is press the black hot white hot switch. Right now you can see it's white hot, but if you click it, it'll switch to black hot, and you can switch between the two to see which one looks the best. You can also zoom the targeting pod in, if you click the targeting pod toggle field of view button, the first time you click it, it'll go into narrow mode. The second time you click it, it'll go into digital zoom. Digital zoom is a lot more zoomed in, but because it just zooms in the picture instead of zooming in the actual lens on the camera, it's a little bit more blurry and pixelated. And you can click it again to go back to the wide field of view. The targeting pod has two modes. You can press the mode switches to switch between air to ground and air to air. Right now it's in air to ground here, but I can also switch it to air to air mode. For now, I'll just keep it in air to ground. Also on the targeting pod, you'll notice you have two data blocks. This one on top shows data for your actual airplane, and the one on the bottom shows data for your targeting pod. Also on the targeting pod, you're going to see this line going around. That's the maximum limit before it gets covered by the plane, and you can see this square here. So if I move the square to the left, once it reaches this line, 
the targeting pod will be blocked by the plane. For example, right now you can see I'm looking at the nose of the plane. You can also declutter the targeting pod. If you press down on the S4 hat, you can remove different symbology. And if you want, you can just have nothing at all. Those were the main controls to change the display for the targeting pod. Now let's go over the Q modes. The Q modes are what you can use to have the targeting pod point at different things. First, we'll do Q, waypoint, plus and minus. If you press the Q, waypoint, plus and minus buttons, then the targeting pod will point to different waypoints. For example, right now I'm queued to waypoint 1, and I can go to waypoint 3 and waypoint 2. And as you queue to the different waypoints, you can see a data block right here, which gives you information about where the targeting pod is looking. Next, I'll go over Q Snowplow. If you press the S4 hat down, you should see Q Snow here, and this will point the targeting pod in front of your plane. If you press the S4 hat up, it'll queue it to the HUD. You can see Q HUD here. And when you queue the targeting pod to the HUD, it'll point it at these wing symbols right here. Now, the Q HUD only works if you're in air-to-ground mode. If you're in air-to-air -air mode and you do Q HUD, instead it'll say Q ADL. If you do that, it'll slew it to the azimuth datum line, which is this cross right here. The last Q mode is the Q designate mode, but before I go over that, I have to go over how to designate a target. If you want to designate a target, all you do is you point the cross over what you want to designate, and then you press full action. And when you do that, you're going to see these bars come up on the side and up here, and also you're going to see this data block here, which gives you information about the target. Keep in mind, you have to be in air-to-ground mode to designate a target. The bar on top shows steering information for the pilot. Right now, it says left, which means the pilot needs to steer to the left. As you can see, the arrow on top shows where the pilot's going, and the bar here shows where the pilot needs to turn to. The bar on the right is the bomb line. As you get closer to the target, there will be a line here that will go down, and when that line hits these two lines down here, that means the pilot needs to drop the bomb. Also, if you click the undesignate switch, it will undesignate the target, however, it will still show the data block down here. So now that I've gone over how to designate a target, I'll talk about the Q designate mode. If you have a target designated and you slew away from it, if you press S4 hat right, it'll point back to your designation. So now that we've gone over all the Q modes and also how to designate a target, let's go over the track modes. You can do a point track or an area track. If you do an area track, if you press the area track button, you can see it say area down here, and the lantern pod will lock and track the general picture. And if you press the point track button, there's going to be a box that comes up in the middle to track a specific point, and it should say point right here. If you're in any of the Q modes, for example, if I go to Q HUD and then move it around, then it's not going to be in point or area track, it's going to be in rates mode. As you can see in rates mode, it doesn't hold any track, it just kind of moves like this. And once I press something like area track, then it will start tracking the ground. Also, if you're in air-to-air -air mode, you can get a point track on an airplane. Next thing we need to go over is how to laser a target. Come back here to the lantern panel and flip up this switch to arm the laser. First, we need to set our laser code. You need to make sure this is the same code that your bombs are set to. When you're on the ground, if you're using laser-guided bombs, you have the option to type in a laser code. In the rearming menu, if I attach a bomb here, for example, a GBU-12, you can press the yellow triangle and you can type in the laser seeker code right here. Also, if you're not sure what your bomb code is, you can hold right shift and click K to open the kneeboard, and then go to this page that says initial loadout, and you can see my bomb here, the GBU-12, and you can see the laser code is 1688. First, we need to make sure we have the right laser code plugged into our targeting pod. What you need to do is press the slider laser switch, and you're gonna see one of the digits here start blinking, and you can use the S4 hat left and right to select a digit, and up and down to change it, and you wanna have the same digits that are plugged into your your bomb. And if you want to exit, what you do is you can press the slider laser switch again, or you can select the first digit and it will automatically exit. You can also select if you want to do automatic or manual laser mode. Right now it's an M for manual, which means I need to manually laser the target myself. But if you click the slider laser switch, and then you press down on the S4 hat, then you can switch it to automatic. Then when you drop the bomb, when the bomb gets close to the target, it'll automatically start lasing for you. For now, I'm just gonna have it in manual mode. In order to actually laser the target, you press half action, and you should see the L blinking. Also, when you laser a target, it'll tell you how far away it is. Right here, you can see SRA, which stands for slant range, and it's 9.4 miles away. If you release half action, it'll stop blinking. Keep in mind, if your targeting pod is pointing too far away, then the laser can't reach that far, and it will not give you a slant range. That's how you laser a target manually. However, if you're in automatic mode, if you do full action to designate a target, 
when you drop the bomb right here it's going to say timp which is time until impact and when the bomb is 10 seconds away it'll automatically start lasing for you there's also one last laser mode which is called laser latch if you press the laser latch button the l will blink and it'll automatically start lasing for 60 seconds and then it'll turn off if you want to turn off the laser latched if you press the button again it won't work what you have to do is press and release half action and then it will stop lasing that was everything to go over with the lantern pod for the back seat now let's go over some controls for the front seat if you want to see the lantern pod from the front seat you have to make sure your hud is in air to ground mode and you have to set this switch up to tv and then you can see the pod you can adjust the brightness and the contrast here you can also control the lantern pod from the gesture menu once again make sure the hud is in air to ground mode because that is the only way to enter the lantern gesture menu if you press a on your keyboard to open the gesture menu you can see the controls for the lantern pod. There's two pages, this one, and there's also the second page right here. I'm not going to be going over all the gesture controls because most of them are the same as in the back seat. However, I will be going over a couple of them which are different. First of all, there's the head control modes. If you select Q eyeballs, then there will be a red circle on your screen and you can use your head to look around and you can put the red circle on wherever you want the lantern pod to look at. Then you can press A again and the lantern pod will be slewed to look at that. As you can see, now the lantern pod is looking right there. The other head control is the direct head control. When you do that, you're gonna see a dot in the middle of your screen and also a circle here. You need to put that dot in the middle of the circle and then the circle will get a lot bigger and then you can move your head to slew the pod around. And when you're done, you can click A again. The other extra feature that the gesture menu has is if you go to set Q mode, there's this one here that says Q map marker. What you can do is go to the F10 map and press the circle up here and put the circle wherever you want the pod to look at. Let's say I want it to look right here and I can just name it something, my marker. And then what you need to do is go to set Q mode, Q map marker and select my marker. And then gesture will slew the lantern pod to look at your map marker. That was the lantern pod for the F14. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.